What's good world? It's your boy Stefan. Welcome to the video. I am super excited to talk about these topics. Um, last video I shared with you the shift, the slight shift that I'm going to have in my content. Uh, that I'm taking my content and uh, this is kind of one of the first series to kind of segue into that shift. Okay, so in today's video what we're going to talk about is what Mr. Robert Glover calls nice guy syndrome. And I want to give a shout out to the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. And uh, I thought this was interesting because I shared a video on the top 10 or 10 books that help with consistency. And one book that I really, really left out, okay, was No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. Pretty sure that's the name of the author. Let me check really quick. I don't know why. No more Mr. Nice Guy. What? Yeah, Glover. All right, so we're going to chat it up. I don't know what I just did. Sarah's watching. Oh, cool. All right, so let's chat it up. Um, where was I at? Yeah, so I'm going to give a shout out to the book because this book literally transformed my life personally. I've recommended it to some friends of mine as well, and this book influenced their life a whole lot, helped them make some big transformations, okay, in all areas, okay, and we're going to talk about how this influences our body game. Bear with me because these are kind of some new topics that we're going to be talking about. So what is nice guy syndrome, all right? What is nice guy syndrome? In a world where we're having this conversation between masculine, what does it mean to be masculine? What does it mean to be feminine? What's a man? What's a woman? What's everything in between? Do the lines even exist? How should a man behave? How should a woman behave? What's the most efficient way? Bunch of questions. And I'm not going to be able to answer all that, nor do I have all the answers. But we're going to start chatting it up about some of this stuff, okay? And this book will help you find some direction. So let's chat it up now that some people hopped on. What is nice guy syndrome? Nice guy syndrome, let's come straight from the book, okay? Let's go straight, straight from the book. This is the intro. I have to read it off my laptop because I don't have the physical book. This is the introduction from No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Glover. It says, five decades of dramatic social change and monumental shifts in the traditional family have created a breed of men who have been conditioned to seek the approval of others. I call these men nice guys. Nice guys are concerned about looking good and doing it right. They are happiest when they are making others happy. Nice guys avoid conflict, like the plague, and will go to great lengths to avoid upsetting anyone. In general, nice guys are peaceful and generous. Nice guys are especially concerned about pleasing women and being different from other men. In a nutshell, nice guys believe that if they are good, giving and caring, they will in return be happy, loved, and fulfilled. Sounds too good to be true? It is. I like that last part. Nice guys believe that if they are good, giving, and caring, they will in return be happy, loved, and fulfilled. Sound too good to be true? It is. <laughs> Let's chat it up. Now, one would think, why does this, what's wrong with this? Why is this bad? I want to be caring, loving. I want people to like me. What's wrong with this? Here's the issue. Now, we're going to dive deep into this topic. Whenever we, life is a struggle. Sometimes you can do the right things, and life ain't going to give you the results that you thought you were going to get. Sometimes you can be the good guy, the great guy, the nice guy. And people will still turn around and be really mean to you and not like you and not be able to relate to you and not want to give back to you. 
and not even appreciate you. And whenever this happens, this is bad because it causes resentment. They think if I do good things, then, and if I give, and if I'm super nice, then everybody's gonna love me and like me. So what happens is, is that nice guys, which, oh, I used to struggle with this. This book transformed my life. Is we give and we don't get the results. And whenever we do all that kind of stuff, especially with that intention, and we don't get the results, our automatic instinct is a nice guy is to give more, be nicer, do more for people, be nicer, be nicer, care more, love more, be nicer. And we still don't get the results. And then what this does is it creates resentment, creates bitterness, creates enormous amounts of confusion. Now, here's some common symptoms of a nice guy. Common symptom number one is they are overgiving and they are caretakers. Are you this individual? Do you know individuals like this? Overgiving and caretakers. Here, let me do this for you. Do you need this? Hey, let me baby you. Hey, do you need this? Let me do this. I'll be here for you. 24 7 one call away. Let me be your superman. Symptom number two is they are avoiding conflict. The nice guy does not want any conflict. He avoids conflict like the plague, as Dr. Glover says in his book. The nice guy don't want no drama. You tell me what to do, I'll probably do it because I just don't want any conflict. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That's the nice guy. Common symptom number three is they hide their flaws and mistakes. I'm the nice guy. I'm the good guy. I got to be perfect. I got to maintain a certain image. If I'm a nice guy I'm an, and I'm a good guy, I shouldn't be making mistakes. And I want people to like me and think that I'm good. So I better not tell them. I better hide that from them. Do you know people who are like this or are you like this? Common symptom number four is they try to be different. Ooh, this one, this one resonates hardcore. Uh, the common symptom of a nice guy is they try to be different from their fathers. That's big. I remember there was a day in my life, it was around the time, I remember points in my life where I said, my name is Stefan, I am going to be different than my dad, and I'm gonna be different in X, Y, and Z. I remember a point saying that. Common symptom number Paper almost fell over. I want to make sure I touch on everything. Common symptom number five, and I was guilty of this as well. The nice guy, although he may be straight, okay, is more comfortable around women than they are men. More comfortable building relationships with women than they are men. Who's had that? Who's seen that? Who knows that person? That nice guy. Because they have a hard time relating to men because they have an issue with their daddies. They want to be the exact opposite. They can't relate. Having a hard time. Common symptom number six is they make their partner their emotional center. Who's done that? Oh, I, if I can just do everything for my partner and I can do it all right. And if that person's happy, then I can be happy. I will be satisfied and I'm doing the right thing. Making your partner your emotional center. <laughs> Are we starting to catch on to some things? The nice guy symptom. Who's struggling with some of this stuff? Do you know anybody who is? Now, common symptoms. What are the side effects of all this for the nice guy? And I'm gonna, this is all going to tie in at how it's going to affect your body game. All right, and if you're a woman watching this, this is important as well because, and I meant to reference this earlier. If you're a woman, this is important as well because you have to probably deal with nice guys. Maybe you're married to a nice guy, okay? Maybe you're married to a nice guy. You're in a relationship with a nice guy. It's causing some conflict. So what, how does it, what type of conflict is this going to cause? One is going to cause dishonesty. The nice guy, usually, he's struggling with dishonesty. He's struggling with Honesty, because maybe he wants to do this, but he wants to avoid conflict. So he doesn't want to doesn't, doesn't want to bring up his real feelings. Maybe he's really tired, doesn't have much more to give, but because he's an overgiver, he's burnt out. He's operating on 25, 50 percent, but because he wants to take care of everybody, 
He's going to act like he's Gucci. Controlling the nice guy. Another problem that they have is they have issues with controlling things. Because if I do this, then I should get that. And whenever we do this and we don't get that, and we keep doing this and we still don't get that, and I'm over here sacrificing my whole entire life, I'm over here not being somebody that I really am, not expressing myself truly, and I'm still not making all those sacrifices, and I'm still not getting what I want. I'm still not getting the results. People still aren't appreciating me. Let me get some more control. I need that control. That's a pain that a lot of nice guys deal with. A lot of nice guys, they have this problem, give to get. That's what he references in the book, Dr. Glover. Give to get. If I give this and if I'm nice to everybody, then everybody will be nice to me. And they'll love me and they'll accept me. Common symptom. Common problem. Nice guys have a difficulty setting boundaries. Well, this is what I want in my relationship, but I'm gonna let my girl push me around. I'm gonna let my wife push me around. This is what I want and I need in the job, but I'm gonna let my boss push me around. Or if I'm gonna start a business, and but I'm a nice guy, so I'm gonna let my clients dictate the price. I'm gonna let my clients dictate exactly how the program's gonna go. Common symptom of a nice guy. Frequently having issues with intimate relationships. And sexuality. The nice guy. Mm -mm -mm. The nice guy doesn't want to offend anybody. In his relationships, he wants to please his woman all the time, 24-7, 365. Her needs way over his. The nice guy. And because of that, maybe the nice guy's looking for something a little different in bed. Maybe he, he's into something else, something a little extra. Some a little different and some a little more spicy, but he doesn't want to offend his, his girl. He doesn't want to be honest about it because he thinks that his sexuality is bad. He thinks that if he looks at a woman and he gets that little buzz, some call that arousal, then that's a bad thing. It's a bad thing. Women don't want sex. No way. Camera's kind of going in and out of focus. So these are some problems that a lot of nice guys face. Do you know a nice guy like this who's having these issues? Or are you the nice guy who had these issues? Yeah, buddy. Uh-huh. Dishonesty. We, we talked about honesty game in a couple videos, video, videos ago. It's probably one of the biggest videos that I ever did. Most important video is just honesty game. That's a big transformation right there. Okay, so we talked about nice guy syndrome. We talked about what it is. We talked about the problems that it's going to cause. Question is, is how did it get this way? All right. How did it get this way? And if you want to go into way detail about all of this, once again, I'm going to direct you towards Dr. Glover's book, No More Mr. Nice Guy, in which case we are doing a five video series over breakdowns in this book to talk about this so it can influence our body game and help our body game, our confidence, our energy. So where did this come from? All right. Where does this nice guy stuff come from? Why is this even a problem? It gets deep. So I'm gonna give you the outline. The first starts separation from men and children, or young boys and children, from their fathers. And let me explain, because I know this is a touchy subject. But if you think about history, we went from agriculture to industry. Okay. Most people spent, most families had some type of farm or worked on the farm. And during this time, what kids would do is they would wake up early, go out onto the farm with their fathers, especially once they reach a certain age. And they would go out and they would work with their pops on, uh, you know, to one, work on a farm. But two, things that they would learn is one, how to work. Two, how to goof around. Three, how uh, you get to learn how a man works, how your father works. <clears throat> You get to see things. These children get access to um, quality time, whether that's through work or you're just relaxing on the workplace with their fathers because it was all in one place. But then we move into the industrial age where the jobs go from the farm to the factory. 
All right. Now, when we think, what is what is the issue with this? This thing causes men to leave the farm and go to the factory. All right. And whenever they do this, two things happen. One, men begin to either spend the majority of their day in the factory or men are forced to leave their homes for weeks or months at a time to travel at a far distance to an urban city to work in a factory so they can then bring it back to provide for their family. But this causes, there's a side effect to this, okay? Because of this, men and fathers are no longer in the household. Let's forget about the single parent stuff that's going on now, okay? But during this time period, we begin to separate men from the household, okay? So now we have children who used to learn the lessons from their father on the farm during the most important hours of the day. Now, during those hours, they are separated from their father, either during, either until, you know, the night in the late evening, or they're separated from their father for weeks and months at a time because they got to move to an urban city. Okay. So now we have this. So now all we have are kids being raised at home and the only person really there is their mama. Okay. Maybe their older brother and sibling. But it puts a lot, it starts to begin to put a lot of pressure on moms. And then moms have to begin to teach the young boys what it means to be a man. So that's just step one. <clears throat> step two, we get into the school systems, all right? So not only are young boys and young girls separated from their fathers because their fathers are out in the factories working and they're not getting that one-on-one -on -one interaction anymore, okay? But kids also then go to school, all right? They spend their quality time in school. And in school, and there's, there's, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this, okay? There's nothing wrong with this per se, but in school, for every one male teacher, there's like 20 female teachers, okay? So in school, for every one, fee, one male teacher, there's like 20 female teachers. So what this does is kids are then, young boys and girls, are no longer in the house, okay. they get up, they go to school, where they learn from their female teacher what it means to be a man, okay? They then go home, and because their fathers are working or gone, they go home to their mamas to then continue what it means, to then continue to learn from their mama what it means to be a man. Are we starting to see where there may be some issues and how we can uh, how we how the separation is starting? Now, Dr. Glover goes into way more detail on how this separation occurred and even more events that brought onto the separation, including the Vietnam War. In which case, this era we have majority of the older generation of men believe that they should have been in the war and believe that there was a reason for the war. But we get a younger generation of men who are, uh, we get some of the hippie movement. We also get this rise of love and all this kind of stuff. Some of it's good, some of it's a little too much, but that's a whole other topic within itself. But the younger generation of men start to begin to believe that we do not need to be in this war. This war is useless. There's no reason for it. War is bad. Okay. So then we have this conflict of the older generation of men and their sons, all right, and the younger generation of men. And what begins to happen, you know, the older generation, World War I, World War II, rah, 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 this younger generation, no war, stop war, love and peace. So we get a younger group of men starting to have conflict with the older group of men. Specifically, and not only that, we start to, be get, start to get men who are saying, I don't want to be anything like my father. I want to be the exact opposite of my father. My father was aggressive. My father was assertive. My father was uh, tough. He uh, was okay with some conflict, okay? I want to begin to then be the exact opposite. So I'm just gonna go in the love direction. I'm just gonna go in the taking care of everything direction, okay? Are you catching on to what I'm saying? This is a lot, it's a lot. You didn't think he was gonna get a history lesson. But once again, thankfully, Dr. Glover is sharing this stuff with us. 
All right. And then also, on top of all that, feminism, which don't blow up on me because I think there's some good parts of feminism. And I definitely believe everybody should have equal opportunity. OK, but there is a radical aspect of feminism that didn't get checked or doesn't get checked as much. And let me explain. So we get young boys and young girls. They're surrounded by women 24 seven in the work, in school and at home. Not blaming the women, not blaming. This is how life shit kind of turned out. All right, but we also get the rise of feminism and the radical aspect of it. What's the radical touch to feminism, okay? What's the radical touch to it? The radical aspect of feminism is whenever we teach women that they need to be free and independent of men. We teach young girls and women that they need to be free and independent of men. But we teach young boys and men that they need to be loving and caring of women. Let me, let me redo that. We teach women that they need to be free and independent of men, but we teach men that they need to be loving and caring of women. That slight ideology, and now that's not all feminism, that's just a radical aspect. Meaning, women shouldn't have to rely on men or do anything for men, but men should have to rely on or should really, really do a lot for women and overcare for women. You see how it can start to cause some contradiction? All right? And so, we get this. And this creeps into the school system. The good aspects of feminism, but also the radical aspect that I mentioned. Okay? Not only does this creep into the school system, but it also creeps into the home as well, all right? So we get this, so you're starting to see how men are really starting to get confused and women are starting to get confused of what it means to be a man, okay? And this is how this nice guy syndrome stuff starts to pop up. This is how we start to get this way from men who are all about, you know, independence, leadership, and um, assertiveness and, um, you know, protecting your family, protecting your home, um, but also balancing love and honesty and all this kind of stuff. Um, men who are more direct, okay? We get, then we get to this wave of nice guys, men who are over caring, men who don't want any type of conflict whatsoever, and men who um, are givers to get, you know, I just mentioned the symptoms, the common symptoms of a nice guy. People who are suffering from nice guy syndrome. So this is how all this starts to come up. This is where all this starts to come from. <laughs> and this is how we create nice guys. Okay, so what can we do now? So how does all this, Stefan, you talked about all this stuff. How does all this affect our body game? How does this affect our life? So there's four ways it affects our body game as men and it, even as women, okay? One, physically. All right, let's just talk about your aesthetics, okay? And just the physical aspect of things. Whenever a guy is suffering from nice guy syndrome, a lot of times because they are over givers and because they put all of their energy into just making their family and friends happy, they don't have the energy to take care of themselves or they don't even have the motivation to take care of themselves because they believe if they take some time, set aside 30 to 45 minutes or an hour out of the day to work on their mind and their body, then they're selfish, okay? So nice guys begin to take, set aside less time to work on their body, to work on their physique, and they're also not even as motivated because they feel like they need to be spending that energy being an overgiver and a caretaker, okay? Reason number two, this affects our body game as men and even as women, okay? Because energy, nice, okay, so body game is all about energy. It's not just about the looks. That's what we talk about. It's about your energy. It's about your vibe, okay? And if you're struggling with nice guy syndrome, okay, and you are resentful because you've been so nice but you're still not getting what you want. You've been nice to all these girls, but they're still not attracted to you. And they're hooking up with the bad guys, okay? Like, you're just resentful, you're bitter, and it, what it's gonna do is it fucks up your vibe, fam, all right? It's gonna mess up your whole energy. That bitterness is gonna flow within you, and it's gonna come off in some way. 
or because you care so much about what other people think because you're struggling for nice guy syndrome, you, you overthink everything and you can't flow. Right? We've talked about the flow state in these videos and the power of it. You're overthinking so much, so you have a hard time flowing. You just can't go out there and just be in the zone and be you and be present in the moment because you're worried about if I say the right thing, do I look the right way? Am I saying this? Am I coming across this way? Etc. You're overanalyzing your behavior. It's going to cause some issues All right, in your body game and your energy and your vibe. All right, reason number three. Reason number three is because... Let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Reason number three, this fucks up your body game, is because you are in a, you will be unable to protect yourself or your family. Because nice guys, nice guys struggle with conflict. They don't want conflict. They want to avoid conflict that, in all measures. Okay, and if that's how you are, there's a chance that you haven't put yourself in conflict. That you haven't learned how to deal with conflict and deal with it, and uh, you know, make something out of it. Okay, turn it into something better because you haven't had that practice. And if you haven't had that practice, then whenever the time comes that you have to defend yourself, you ain't gonna really be able to do it. Most likely, okay. It's going to be hard. You're going to have a hard time doing it because you ain't been practicing. You ain't been thinking like that. Now, most people, whenever it comes to fighting, they imagine themselves fighting about a thousand times better than they actually fight. And I know that from personal experience. And I know that because now I train Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Well, Jiu-Jitsu and uh, mixed martial arts, okay? So we get a lot of people with that issue. So, <clears throat> and we talk about the body game is... True honesty, your relationship to your body and how your body can handle stressful situations, including combat. So not only are you not able to protect yourself, which influences your body game, you're unable to protect your family, which is going to influence your body game. And because you are so avoiding of conflict, whenever it comes to business, whenever it comes to your career, you're going to have a harder time providing in that situation as well, because you're just going to let your boss boss you around. You're going to let your clients boss you around and dictate everything. You're not going to know how to, you're not going to be ballsy enough to negotiate for a high price. Okay. You're not going to be ballsy enough to negotiate. Because you don't want to offend your boss. You don't want to create any conflict. Nice guy syndrome. All right, reason number four. This fucks with your, with your body game. Because body game also has to do with sex appeal. All right? And how well your sex life is. It has to do with body game as well. And I don't get into a lot of that because I know I got some, some of the youth that watch my videos. But I will be getting into that stuff in the future. Okay? And so, <clears throat> let's think about the first three reasons. All right, your energy's messed up, your physicality ain't on point, and you can't defend yourself. You ain't that tough. All right, do those three things sound like that? Do those three things add up to sex appeal to you? All right, your energy's whack, you're bitter, your physicality ain't on point, you can't defend yourself. Do those three things even add up to sex appeal? No, they don't. All right, I don't know what world you live in, but they don't really add up to sex appeal. Okay, so let's just get on that. You're not going to be, you're going to struggle with your sex appeal on your body game because of that. Now let's add in, because you're a nice guy, because you don't want to offend anybody, you're going to have a hard time approaching women, talking to women, all right? You're going to have a very hard time being direct with women, all right? The nice guy usually gets friend zone, but what's the friend zone? It's a dude who knows he wants to be with a chick, but for whatever reason, she ain't vibing, so she says, you can be my friend, all right? And maybe you weren't direct about it. But she says you could be my friend and that's it. And because you're the nice guy, you're like, fuck it. I want to please her. I want to make her happy. Yeah, I'd rather, you know, do the other stuff with her. But I'm a nice guy and I'm a good guy, so I'll be her friend instead. So now you're over here fucking up your boundaries, okay? So a lot of nice guys aren't direct. They're, they're scared to tell a woman, hey, so when are we going to do the do? You know what I'm saying? What's your thoughts on that? They're scared to tell the woman how they really feel, yo. <laughs> you know? And because they're scared to do that, they ain't gonna, they, they are not gonna create the opportunities. Opportunities are not gonna be created if you are dishonest with women. You're gonna get way more friend zone than anything, okay? And maybe you'll get lucky that every now and then some girl's just like <clears throat> really into you and she'll just like tell you from the jump. But if you ain't ballsy, 
you're gonna lower your chances of finding success in that area. Plus, from my understanding, women like men who are more direct and honest. Women can tell, usually, from the first five seconds if a man is really interested in her in a sexual manner. So whenever you're over here, up here, the nice guy, you walk up to a girl, knowing that she want to do the doinky doinky, okay? But you're like, no, I just want to be a friend. I'm just trying to get to know you. I just want to be a friend and, uh, no, I don't think like that. I don't really think about sex until, like, uh, you know, if I really know women, we're really good friends, okay? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, whatever, bro. I'll let you be the friend. That's cool. But you ain't getting nothing more, okay? So these are four reasons why it's going to fuck up your body game. While being a nice guy, nice guy syndrome is fucking up your body game. Or if you're a woman watching this, I know you got friends who are nice guys. They need to watch this video. They need to read this book. It's going to change their life. I used to struggle so hard with nice guy syndrome. I had all the issues. Too nice. I couldn't be honest with women. I mean, I could be, but I didn't feel like I should be. Or because I was going to come across as a dick. Hide my imperfections. Controlling. Giving a lot, but I'm nice to you. I took you out on the dinner. I took you out on the dates. I never cheated on you. I never lied to you. Why do you not love me? Why do you not want to be with me? Uh, but that guy that you're about to go on a date with, uh, he play you. Uh, he's a dick. Uh, he says weird things sometimes. All right? I used to be that guy. Why do you not want to be with me? <laughs> The nice guy. So I gotta ask you, are you struggling with the nice guy syndrome? Do you know people, men, who are struggling with nice guy syndrome? What are your thoughts on nice guy syndrome? What do you think the line is? Okay, so here's some action steps. If you wanna start overcoming nice guy syndrome, one, you really wanna buy the book because it goes into way more detail than I'll be able to go into over the, and he has his own little twisted things. But you want to buy his No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Glover. All right, that's step one. All right, step number two, if you don't want to buy the book, first go look on the YouTube and look up summaries. Look up interviews with Dr. Glover, okay? See what he has to say. If people do book summaries, learn a little bit more about what Nice Guy Syndrome is, okay? And start to become aware of behaviors that you use or the behaviors that you have that qualify as nice guy symptoms. All right, and begin to not only become aware of that, but think about what you want to replace that with. Dr. Glover talks about there's the nice guy and there's the integrated male. We're not gonna go into a lot of detail about what the integrated male is in this specific video. But all you really have to do is Figure out the, call this trick inverting, just figure out what you don't want to do, aka the symptoms of a nice guy, and just invert that. Okay, so we're going to, instead of being dishonest, we're going to start being honest. All right? Instead of over caring, we're going to give to people, but, um, you know, we're going to care for people, but I can't, a 50% you taking care of your family ain't good for your family. Your family's going to do way better. Your friends are going to do way better. Your clients will get way better results if you are operating at 100% with them, not 50%, okay? So we're going to start embracing some conflict. Get in the gym, all right? Take up a martial arts class. Get in there and get punched. Learn how to defend yourself. Go in and punch some people. Wrestle, okay? Learn how to wrestle. Do some jujitsu, okay? Learn negotiating tactics. Get some books on negotiating. Negotiating and sales and persuasion and uh, how to start, you know, making your claim. All right, start start to claim your offer, start to claim your price, start to claim your standards, set your boundaries. All right, get in there, have some difficult conversations with people. Start some stuff like that, and that'll start to get you out, out the nice, out the darkness into the light. I'll tell you this. My energy's changed since I've read this book. You can go back and watch my old videos. My energy's changed. Videos that I dropped over a year ago. My energy's changed. Women look at me different. Women treat, treat me differently. Now I'm not that dude out here like doing it with a bunch of chicks and all that kind of stuff because that ain't really my lifestyle. But 
Have I gotten more choosy signals from women? That's what people call it. Yes, I have. Okay. Do the women that I interact with and do that I have intimacy with, do they treat me differently now? Yes. Okay. Am I scared to talk to women? No. Be honest with women? No. Am I scared to be... <sighs> my, my work life's gotten different. My career's gotten different. I've had more success in my career because my vibes are different. I'm posting more videos. Taking, taking responsibility for myself as a man, as a 27 year old, and making transformations in my life. It's not about perfection, but it's about progress, okay? This book has motivated me to take my boys' classes seriously. Like my little boys' class, like it motivated me to get out here in my community and be more involved with these kids so I can show them an example of what it really means to be a man, a masculine man, okay? I have a good friend of mine. He read this book, same exact results. He's got better results in some areas than me. It's crazy, okay? It's wild. So I'm going to wrap this up. Let me know what you think about nice guy syndrome. No more Mr. Nice Guy. What you think about the concepts we talk about? Do you struggle with nice guy syndrome? Do you know somebody who's struggling with nice guy syndrome? Mm. I'm going to wrap this video up. Got to go teach a class. I'm going to go teach a boys class, actually. It's your boy, Stefan. Y'all know the drill. It's not a phase. It's a movement. Peace.